This is a direct follow-up from an earlier video titled Spying with Gemery. In Sen Real Story. Instant Results. If you haven't already watched that video, pause this video, go watch that video, then come back to this video. I have the link in the description box below. In summary, I started working with Gemery about six months ago. At the time, I asked her for help to develop my astro senses. I also asked her to find a girlfriend whom I've lost contact. It was an instant success, the story I've posted earlier. I have since then developed a close friendship with Gemery, she's full of life and energy, and she visits my dreams often. I will do another video on the specific qualities of Gemery on a later date. I can say. For all the spirits I have worked with, Gemery is the most responsive, the kindest and the most energetic spirit I have encountered. To briefly follow up on where last story left off. In short, Gemery basically told me where this girl work, for the sake of this story, we will name this girl Amber Johnson. I did a scrying ritual where I invoked Gemery, then a few hours later, Amber accidentally posted a picture of where she worked. She worked at a mall not far away from where I live. I never went to visit her on location, I thought it would be a really shitty thing to do. That happened back in January, a few weeks later, the coronavirus crisis struck, and the state was on lockdown. I soon forgot about her. A few weeks ago, during a candlelight ritual with Gemery, she asked me, You haven't asked for Amber Johnson in a while, what's wrong? Gemery said in a half teasing, half curious way. I said to Gemery, Oh, it's impossible, I give up, I have resigned to never seeing her again. Gemery replied to me, Don't give up yet, I am working on it. It takes time. I said to Gemery, Well, maybe show me it is still possible. My mind soon drift to a different subject, it was the height of a pandemic, so I had other issues. Gemery was so sweet, she sort of gave me a hug, and we sat and watched Netflix together. Fast forward to a few days ago. This was now late June, 2020. What happened next can only be explained by an intervention of a supernatural force. I survived the pandemic, but my business had taken a toll. So when my state started to reopen, I have to jump into action. Without going into details of what I do, one aspect of my business involves meeting with potential customers. Sometimes I need to meet my customers out of town. I thought I had a deal few weeks ago, after much negotiation, that deal fell apart in the last minute. It's pandemic time, business is rough. The next week, I have a similar deal with an out of town customer. I waited until the day before to book my hotel accommodation. Knowing if my customer cancel, I won't be stuck paying for a hotel room I don't need. Guess what? My customer cancelled a few minutes after I finalized my travel plans. So I am out of a hundred dollars or so, since I've already paid for the room, I might as well go on a field trip. It's a nice hotel, nothing fancy. A Hampton Inn class of three star hotel. Plus it's good to get out of the house after months of lockdown. My plan was to go to the hotel, take a bubble bath, and get a good night's sleep. I don't have a car at the moment, my original plan was to take an Uber. It would have been about $80 one way, expensive, but it was business expense. But since I am on vacation, I might as well take public transportation, save a few dollars, feel more engaged with the community. To my present surprise, some public transportation is free in my state during the pandemic, and I was able to plot out a way to reach the hotel without paying a dime. Sweet. Then something happened that could only happen in 2020. The bus driver got lost. At first I thought he was joking, it's a local bus route and these drivers usually spend years driving the same route. I was the only passenger who can speak English, and yes. This is the United States, so I went and stood next to the driver, pulled out my iPhone, using my GPS and bus map, instructed the driver where to turn and where to stop. 
It was a surreal experience. Turns out my hotel is next to a mall. I knew there would be a mall nearby, but they are so close they practically share the same parking lot. When I got to the hotel, I was exhausted. I just want to lay down and pass out. Then I remembered the mall next to the hotel. I pulled out my iPhone to check for direction, and as soon as I signed back into my phone, the map screen, which I was using to help navigate the bus driver to his destination, was stuck on the map of the mall. And you know how Google Map these days will show you what's inside the mall? As soon as I pinch the screen, Google Map is telling me that there is a branch of that cosmetic store chain where Amber Johnson works. My thought at the time was, holy shit. Could she be there today? Keep in mind this is a different mall than the one from the last story. This location is much further away from my house, but closer to where Amber Johnson lives. The mall is closing in half hour. There is only one way to find out. Yes it is shitty to surprise an ex-girlfriend where she works, but guess what? We are in the middle of a pandemic. Everybody are wearing mask. I also have a baseball cab. As long as I don't identify myself, she won't recognize me. Or would she? So I ran across the parking lot to the mall. There was a line outside the cosmetic store. After a few minutes of waiting, I got inside. At this point, my heart was pounding out of my chest. Being the only guy in a cosmetic store, I kind of have to lay low and pretend I am looking for a gift. As I was walking into the store, I heard a girl voice that's very familiar. The she was, Amber Johnson, a girl I have been obsessed over for years. She was talking to her friends, my back was to her, and there was a counter between us so she wasn't even aware I was in her vicinity. She has a very distinctive voice, and a very distinguishable laughter, so I recognized her voice. I sneaked around the counter and gave her a few glances, just to confirm, that she was, in flesh, Amber Johnson. She was busy with another costumer, so she paid no attention to me. She had a tattoo in the back of her neck, and it was clearly visible from my line of sight. So even though she was wearing a mask, there is no doubt it was her. I never spoke to her, I am not the kind of guy who wants to cause trouble. She gave me a nod and a cordial smile, the way any sales lady would to a potential customer. She never recognized me as who I am. After a few minutes in the store, I left. My heart was still pounding off my chest after I left the store, I was still in shock meeting up with this girl I obsessed over for many years, more so, I was in shock with the series of unlikely event that lead up to this quote unquote chance encounter. If you have watched my other videos, you would know this is the moment where the demon taps me on the shoulder and say how you like me now. In this case, I got a feeling that it was the work of Gemery all along. I knew from the moment I saw the cosmetic store on my Google map back in the hotel room. So I was sitting in one of those massage chairs in the mall, staring dead ahead with a blank expression. Holy shit. This occult shit is for real. The next day, I debated if I should go back to the mall and catch a last glance of Amber Johnson. So after I check out the hotel, I said to myself, hey you only live once. So I changed into a different outfit, wore a different mask and a different hat, and went back to the store. Amber Johnson was nowhere to be found. Maybe her shifts haven't started yet. Maybe she didn't work that day. Who knows? I did brought a tube of lipstick. May I say a $20 tube of lipstick, it was the cheapest one in that store. Ouch. The lipstick was not for me it was for Gemery, I used it as an offering and left it on Gemery's altar. All I can say is holy shit. This entire episode have the footprint of spiritual entity all over it. Think of the random coincidences that needed to happen for this chance encounter. First, I had to have two business deal felt apart, and one to have fallen apart in such a fashion that I would have booked a non-refundable hotel room. The timing needed to be perfect too. A day later or a week earlier, I would have missed Amber Johnson. 
Second, I just happened to book at that town, at that hotel. It wasn't the cheapest hotel on hotel.com, but for some reason, I just got a feeling I want to stay at that hotel. There is an inexplicable pull towards that hotel when I book. Third, the local bus driver had to have gotten lost so I have to pull out my cell phone GPS Google map. Had I not done so, I wouldn't even know there is a mall next to the hotel. And also the chance that when I picked my phone up again in the hotel room, it just happened to pinned on that cosmetic store. Also the hotel happened not to have a bathtub but just a shower, had there been a bathtub, I would had soak in the comfort of a bubble bath and elected to go to the mall the next day, where Amber Johnson would not have been there. Also, what needed to happen on Amber Johnson's end to facilitate the chance encounter? First, she needed to work a location that's not the one she usually works. I believe the location she usually work is still closed due to the pandemic. Secondly, she had to be working that day, at that shift, any other time, I wouldn't have ran into her. Thirdly, she had to pick a shirt where her back tattoo was clearly visible, she also needed to have to been laughing and talking to her friends at the moment I was behind her. Or else it would have been very difficult to identify her in a mask amongst all the makeup ladies. Most importantly, we were both wearing masks, so she wouldn't be able to identify me thus saving a highly awkward situation. This encounter would have been impossible back in January, back when I first invoked Gemery. The pandemic and the mask made it possible. Gemery said, this is by no means the end of her working, she just created this episode to show me she's still working on getting us back together, or find me someone better with similar physical qualities, and that I shouldn't give up. I know many of you are thinking, so what? Big deal, you saw her back. To me, this is a big deal, in fact, I rate winning the lottery more probable than seeing Amber Johnson again. I can always make money, and money can buy me a lot of nice things, but there are some things money just can't buy, you know? From my perspective, that was a miracle. Most importantly, beyond seeing a beautiful woman again, this proves to me, beyond any doubt, that spiritual entities are real, and they can make a forceful impact in the physical world. In all my other stories, I can somehow explain away with coincidences and with a certain rational eventuality. This episode, to me, has far too many unusual events that need to have happened in such a precise order that a mere coincidence cannot explain. What can a practicing black magician learn from this story? First and foremost, Black magic works. Gemery is real. I will do a separate video specifically on the quality of Gemery. Second, learn to scry. When I scry, the answer didn't come from the scrying session. In fact, the scrying session was very boring. Answers reveals themselves to me, through circumstances, after the scrying session was over. Thirdly, if you don't achieve the outcome right away, it doesn't mean the ritual failed. Sometimes it will take a lot of elements to fall into place. Also, don't expect a smooth ride. The weeks leading up to that encounter with Amber Johnson was tedious, a lot of start and stop, a lot of cancellations, a lot of lost opportunities. Having said that, trust that your spirit guide is working on your behalf to make things happen. This is where the importance to frequent ritual comes in. When you keep a channel open with a spirit, you are likely to make decisions influenced by that spirit, that which guide you to your goal. The spirit needed to move circumstances around you, at the same time, you are also making the coordinating decisions in the physical plane for things to happen. In short, I highly recommend working with Gemery. Keep in mind, she is a goddess and she deserves your respect. She may be friendly but never forget who she is. Be very polite, allow yourself to be vulnerable, share your feelings, talk to her like you would talk to your best friend. Never order her around. She's very soft spoken but she also talks very fast. She will find a way to communicate to you if you can't hear her well. Like I said before, I will do a full video on how to work with Gemery in the near future. 
I have worked with other spirits before, and in time, I would like to share those stories too. Looking online, I haven't found a lot of people who have specifically worked with Gemery. There are a lot of talks about her, but very few true story I can count on to reference. Do you have an experience with this entity? Share your experience on the comments below. One last thing, if you are a YouTuber or have another blog, and you enjoyed this story, which is 100% true, please share it on your channel. Gemery would appreciate the attention. Good things happens to people who gain the favor of this powerful spirit.